Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Talking Sass. And thank you guys so much for joining me. You know, this week I have another stellar guest up, but before we talk to that guest, let's talk about patreon.com slash sassy Steffi. Of course, you guys knew I was gonna say that, right? Tiers start at only $2 and you're gonna get exclusives with each and every single one of my guests. And it's so much fun. So make sure you guys go check that out. Again, it's patreon.com slash sassy Steffi. If you want to follow along on Instagram and Twitter, awesome, do that. It's uh, at Sassy Steffi. If you guys are watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you never miss a second of Talking Sass. Also, if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to go rate and review Talking Sass. Please give us five stars and leave a great review. I love reading those when I get them. So make sure you guys do that because that's a lot of fun to read. Now, on to this week's guest. He was recently seen on AEW Dark and on Elevation, and he's been one of my really good friends for a very long time, so I'm so glad that I'm getting to have him come on to talk about his recent successes in AEW. Plus, he is the reigning and defending Revenge Pro champion in Erie, Pennsylvania for over 500 days. That's crazy, but such an amazing accomplishment. I can't wait for you guys to get to know more about him. So here he is, big time Bill Collier. Hey guys, I'm sitting here with big time Bill Collier and he's actually somebody that I would have said that I know really, really well, except now we just realized before this this, uh, Zoom call that it's been about 11 years since the last time we've seen each other. So Bill, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, and I, and honestly, I like like we said, I can't believe that it's been that long. Um, you you've moved off to another country. You you've gotten uh, married. I see you have a little boy, and um, we keep up via social media. I am I live in New York now, right on the border of Canada. So we both moved up north a little bit, um, mm-hmm. along with my son Devin, who you know pretty well yeah. I also had a, a new little daughter myself mm-hmm. so everything is uh everything's going really good yeah definitely I'm like I mean the t- the reason why I would say like we were really good friends is back when I first got started and actually I when I was doing my research on you you actually started two months prior to me you started in January 2007 correct yep that was a, that was my first match my first training okay. session was probably a few months before, um, like yeah. late 06. But yeah, January, I want to say 20th, give or take, um, was probably my first match. Okay, see, March 7th, uh, 2000, or no, March 10th, 2007 was my first match. So I always remember that. Right. I got the poster right here anyway to remind me. So we started around the same time, but probably a year after that, we were pretty much inseparable because at the time the woman you were with i was pretty much wrestling on a weekend basis like every other weekend at least we were seeing each other and if we weren't working each other we were- to the point where we were traveling together you were you know at the house with my ex mm-hmm. um it, it part of a it was a part of a core group of people and like at my ex-girlfriend you uh i remember angel dust being a part of the that little group and uh that would have been back 07 to what do we figure about 2010 or 11 at least yeah exactly it's crazy to think like to me i haven't seen angel dust probably in that amount of time as well and your ex and yourself. So it's like, it's, it's just crazy to me because I'm like, I really still think like, I just saw you guys like literally a few months ago, even though obviously pandemic aside, you know? Yeah, it really, it really does. You don't realize how much, uh, how much time and how much your life's actually passed you by. Like you said, until we started talking about it, I didn't realize, well, obviously I still keep in touch with my ex. It's my son's mother. Um, Mm -hmm. So we, we still talk. We're on we're actually on better terms now than we were everywhere when we were dating. It's the best. Well, that's good, at least. Yeah. <laughs> at least you guys are civil. That's important. Yeah, especially yeah, we, especially we, with we, Devin involved. Yeah, we and he's a, you've seen him. He's a, he's a grown man now. He's got a beard. He's not a little boy anymore. No, like I said, I when we were talking off camera, I was like, I don't think I've seen Devin since he was eight. But since we figured out a little bit of the timeline, he says I was probably 11 or 12, which... 
I right. mean, you know, for that, you, he's still a, a, not even a teenager yet, a kid. The last time I saw him, it's just insane. Yep, and now here he is. He's uh, he's navigating. He's driving the vehicle. I'm sitting in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're actually coming back from a show, which is awesome. I'm glad that you're still able to do the podcast today. Absolutely, I was at uh, IWC International Wrestling Cartel. We did a Survivor Series theme uh, series of matches, and Andrew Palace and myself were the last remaining survivors of the night. So it was a good time outdoors awesome. outdoors because of like pandemic and restrictions and you know because you've done this for so long um our fans are very important to us mm -hmm. so we do what we can to bring our brand of entertainment and what we do to them in any situation that we can do safely and you know, an outdoor show in April, it's not the most pleasant weather today, but we do what we can. <laughs> we do what we can. It started raining right when we were done. It wasn't that warm. It was pretty cold, uh, but it, everyone seemed like they had a good time, and that that's what we like to do. You know what I mean? We, we like to bring that to our fans. They mean a lot to us. Of course. I mean, for me, I haven't wrestled in about three years, I think, and- wow with of course the pandemic and everything too it's just like I was like itching I'm like I, I sometimes even tell my husband I'm like I just want to get in the ring and you know bump around a little bit or something but right now in Canada it's like a no-go because like even being next to a person is like a high ray murder you know but being, uh, doing the podcast it brings a lot of people in that I haven't talked to in years or that are successful in different ways that I haven't seen. Like, obviously I brought you on because you've had a lot of good things going on, which we're gonna talk about. And it's like just great to catch up with people and still kind of feed that itch a little bit, like scratch it a little bit, even though I'm not quite in the ring. There you go. And, and being around, it helps a lot too. Um, we have uh in the Niagara Falls area, there's a uh, group of guys, they have a ring and we work out. I wouldn't exactly call it a training school, mm -hmm. um, but a group of us, you know, stop by every once in a while and we'll work out, you know, we'll get some stuff done. I don't, you know, uh, I'm pushing a, a little older age than we, uh, <laughs> than we thought, but um, I don't bump around too much, but I'll get in the ring and I'll move around with the guys and help them out the best I can. Um, so I know a little bit being in, up in that area. I know a little bit about what you uh, what you guys are going through in Canada, and it's a lot tougher for people to think we have it tough here in the states. It's a lot tougher for you guys up there. I, I I've been hearing all about it. Well, living in Niagara Falls, which is literally on the border of of uh, the uh, Ontario border of Canada, Ontario right now has it much worse than us. Which usually I'm in Quebec usually Quebec is more strict, but right now it's like Ontario is just like completely shut down. It's like the border, even inside our own border, like going from Quebec to uh, Ontario is not allowed right now. Like you get checked at the border to see like why you're going in. It's like almost if, it, if I was going back into the States, why are you going, where are you going? I need a confirmation da, 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 da. It's It's like literally nuts. But I, uh, well, when I flew I'm to Georgia, over COVID. Yeah, I flew to, like we, we, we talked about, I flew to Jacksonville, Florida mm -hmm. uh, at the end of March, about a month ago. And I was able to, to fly freely. I didn't need any testing. I didn't need any, well, I had to have testing where I was going, obviously. Right. But like I could board a plane and get off the plane without, without any kind of negative test, a negative COVID test. Luckily, I was. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, we didn't need any of that. We can still move around. We can still travel. Um, eating, like in Pennsylvania especially, like we can still uh, eat restaurants and all that. Uh, masks required. Uh, we're not pushing the, uh, the limits of capacity. But we still, we're, we're living a fairly normal. Um, I'd still like to see things go back to normal, normal, not a new normal. That's just personally. Yeah, but we're of course, still everybody. Doing, uh, we're, still doing, we're still doing pretty okay. I know I, I don't want to talk about COVID the entire time because ugh, we're all over it. But I remember like I went to a store recently and like I was looking at whatever I was looking at and there was like two other or three other people that were like right behind me. And I was like, I've got to get out of here. Like 
that's how like I just felt so uncomfortable and I'm not a person who gets anxiety I'm pretty chill laid back whatever but like it was like it scared the shit out of me because I have like people on top of me I'm like get the fuck away from me (laughs) I um for whatever reason I it hasn't really bothered me yet um like I said I don't want to stay on it too long because it's everywhere but (laughs) I feel um I feel like you Most people know their own body. I trust my own immune system. I've been around it. I have been around people that have had it. Um, I'm fine. Most people I think will be, but like, I trust my immune system. I trust my body. I trust, you know, the the way I built my immune system. Like I'm never really sick as it is. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I I never really miss work. I can't call it like, oh, I'm sick today because I'm never really sick. (laughs) um it's just a, a matter of trusting your own immune system a little bit i think like for yeah. me and anyway but uh so, so being around people doesn't make me that nervous it was just like the i mean i guess because of the rules and regulations that we have here in canada like i was just like n- like no like now i have my own personal bubble that i've been used to for like the last like year and a half and i'm yeah. like just get out of my bubble i when i move you can look at whatever i was looking at just yeah it's crazy but anyway let's start talking about more wrestling and more of your accomplishments that you've had before we start about the most recent ones I mean we let's go back a little bit and talk because I mean you've been in the top uh PWI top 500 males for like the last what six seven years I, I want to say it's closer to 10 I want to say okay. like 10 or 11 years in a row and this past year has been the first year that I haven't been now, everyone will sit and say, well, you know, it's just a work. It's just a, and it is, but when the list comes out, you'll, you'll, you'll blow through it and you'll look, oh, well, how the hell did this guy get here? And <laughs> why is this guy up so high? What the, and then I'll look at it like, oh, this is bullshit. Um, of course. And then you don't really think about it again, but it is cool to be recognized as, you know, one of the top 500 guys that do this that is a, a a cool little and at the risk of sounding like too much of a mark i still have all of the um i still have all the magazines that the actual like print version you have to go look for them you have to buy them it's like all right i have it here it is because someday you know someday this uh this business has a shelf life as we all know and someday it's going to be over and i want to be able to look back and, and say my son who's who's been around it and he's seen it and he has it he knows it um he's going to be able to talk with me like i remember that i remember that we can look through my little girl isn't going to remember daddy like that yeah. she's not i don't know that we're going to get to a point where she's going to be able to see a match of mine and remember like she was there today but she's only eight months old she'll never right. remember where Devin at almost 23, uh, my son, he'll, uh, he's like, oh, you remember this? Do you remember this? And we'll talk about like him being on the road as a kid and like, hey, you remember this? We did this? Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, because I remember like when we would be on shows with certain names, you guys would come with action figures, not trying to be marks or anything, but you would ask, yeah. like, hey, for my son who was sitting out in the crowd, do you mind, you know, autographing this? Absolutely. So I always thought that was so cool. Like, I was like, oh, when I have kids, if I'm still in the business, that's definitely something I would want to do for them as well. And and you'd be surprised, you know, regardless how far up the name goes. And watch your feet. I'll drop a name here. Even uh, somebody is renowned that this was, you know, O's, eight maybe seven oh eight Kurt Angle was around and he was more than happy to lend his time and sign something for my kid and take a photo with him mm-hmm. you know what I mean? and I know how much that meant having somebody do that for me and for my kid so I I'm all about doing stuff like that now although yeah, yeah I'm not quite in that league yet but uh, yeah, I'm all about uh, you know the signing of the autographs and kids being around. I like that sort of thing myself. Yeah, it's funny because um, I'm not going to throw any names out there because they're still currently with WWE. But I know I've met certain people at WWE when 
let's say they're on the independence or, you know, outside of wrestling, I've, I've met them and they're not exactly the nicest person, but then like, uh, before COVID happens, it was in December before COVID and WWE came to town and one of my friends brought me and a couple of my nephews backstage and like I saw yeah. them walking by and I was like, oh goodness. I was like, this is going to be good, right? Because we obviously know who each other are. And I was like, do you mind giving an autograph to my nephews who had their, you know, book? And they're like, oh yeah, no problem. Anything for the kids. And I was like, yeah, but you were so like, I didn't say it to them there, but I was like, you're such a tool bag to me, but whatever. That is what it is. I'm an adult They're, you know, but kids, of course, is a totally different subject. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the, the kids, like, they, they really help make this. They, mm -hmm. they really do. All the adults start falling behind. They're like, oh, oh look at this. It's great. That, that's the best part about, like, I've done some of these podcasts with them. Haven't necessarily been in our position. Haven't been in the ring like we have. Mm -hmm. And it's cool to talk to you about it because you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've yeah. been in those same spots. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, let's talk about some more of your accomplishments because I know you tweeted just recently that Revenge Pro in Erie, Pennsylvania, one of the, uh, I think that's the only uh, promotion in Erie, Pennsylvania, isn't it, Revenge Pro? Oh, right now it is. Um, yeah. You remember old PWR. Mm -hmm. there was, uh, some people were unhappy about some changes being made. So... Aaron Draven himself took it upon it, you know, he took it upon himself to dig into his own pockets and make revenge happen from next to nothing. Wow. And I've been in Erie wrestling with PWR since 2007. Like we we did you know events there forever. Yeah. And these guys <clears throat> they were the, some change was happening with management. They didn't like it and I'll be honest with you I sat at the table and if anybody tells you they weren't treated poorly they're lying because they were the yeah. boys were absolutely treated poorly and they decided that no you know what we're the ones that built this city we're the ones that built wrestling here and they took a chance with revenge pro and knocked it out of the park home run absolutely and it's done better than anything wrestling wise in eerie sense Oh, that's fantastic. But what I was getting to, because I mean, obviously I grew up, but I was in Erie, uh, Pennsylvania for PWR for many years while I was there. But in Revenge Pro, you have actually been the champion for over 500 days there. I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. I mean, okay, 365 plus now or because of COVID, but still, COVID. it's still yeah. an accomplishment. It's still in those record books, 500 days. <laughs> right, well, well, you were around during some of my early uh, Erie championship runs that were that were going quite a long time. Yeah. Um, so who's to say I wouldn't still be champion defending every month anyway there? Of course, <laughs> of course. Not saying that at all. I'm just saying, you know, COVID aside, of course. But I remember that those crowds in Erie are fantastic. And I think maybe it's because they don't have 900 different promotions running in the same month there. And not to, not to take a knock, like uh, I'm closer to Pittsburgh and you're from closer to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, the markets are, I'm not saying who's, who's bad and who's great, but like the markets get a little oversaturated. Yes. When you have a bunch of promotions running you know, on any given weekend, you could see the same audience and the same audience could see the same wrestlers, you know, all month long at different promotions. Mm -hmm. And with Erie, like you said, it's at least to Cleveland, to Pittsburgh and to Buffalo where the, the markets are a little more saturated. It's a two hour drive between any one of those. Yeah. It's so Erie kind of stands alone in that little corner. But what, what I also loved about Erie is I could do a show in Cleveland Friday a show in Erie on Saturday and then do Pittsburgh on Sunday. And like, I'm not, like you said, I'm within two hours from home. I'm just doing a big triangle, you know, I'm not like. Hmm? Yep. It's a big triangle, right? Yeah. Right where you're moving. Perfect. That's a perfect loop. Yeah. It was the best. I mean, there was even times I would do like an afternoon show 
in between Erie and Pittsburgh and then hit up the, the other one that night. But like, it was still far enough away that it didn't matter. I and like speaking, that. Those are the best. Yeah. And speaking of, there was one show. This is one of my personal stories. I wanted to see if you remember, and even maybe Devin might remember this one too. We were doing one of those weekend afternoon shows. It was just south of Erie. It was for um, Rocky. Rocky Reynolds, Mad Bar Wrestling. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, I was wrestling your ex-girlfriend in a mixed tag match. I don't even remember who my partner was. I Lumberjack was one of the was one of our partners, and okay. I don't remember who the other male was. And I was wrestling her. She gave me a simple, simple thing, threw me backwards by my hair, I think. And yes. the way the padding was was like this or something. Yep. And it shot my shoulder forward, broke my collarbone right in the middle of the match. And I'm like, quick tag, we got to get out of here. <laughs> All right, we make the tag. We get out of the remember, ring. What was it? I remember that specifically. We drove you to Meadville Hospital mm -hmm. and sat there with you while you got checked out. And then I don't know if you'll remember this. Uh, pizza dinner was on me that night. <laughs> I don't remember the pizza dinner being on you that night, but I do remember going out for pizza. Although yeah. I was severely hopped up on some pain medication. They, they did have you hopped up on meds. Um, <laughs> yes. I don't remember. I, I want to say that uh, I want to say that somebody came and got you in Meadville, but yeah. I do remember. My do mom remember. and my okay. brother came from uh, the Cleveland, well, Akron area, to come get me in Meadville because. Somebody had to drive my car back. So yep. my brother and my mom both came. But I remember like it was the show that we happened to be a part of was like some kind of festival going on there in Meadville. And we yep. were like one of the attractions, the wrestling. So I break my shoulder. Some doctor in the back doctor was like, oh, do you want me to pop it back in? I was like, you're freaking nuts. I'm going to the hospital. Like, don't touch me. And yep. we go to the hospital. And I remember there was so many like accidents or something that was happening along the festival that the ER was overpacked. So they actually kicked me out. And that's why we went to get pizza because I couldn't stay there any longer. Wow. I didn't realize that that's what I, I remember the shoulder. I remember the ER. I remember dinner afterwards. I remember the having, we waited with you while your ride came. I yeah. remember all, remember all of that, like, vivid detail because we went to the uh went to the local Walgreens there to fill your prescription right away so you'd be all right oh yeah oh yeah definitely I re like I remember that day and I remember because like in the back like I come to the back I'm okay like obviously I'm in pain I'm in shock right. so I'm not crying I'm not like losing it yet and I remember I sit down and start crying and everybody's like, oh, Stephanie, are you okay? Like, I'm like, I'm supposed to wrestle in England in two weeks. <laughs> and that's the reason why I was upset. <laughs> um, about two years later, I want to say I got hurt in that same ring. Oh, Almost no. same style of thing happened. I take a backdrop uh, from Bennett Cole and I landed and when my feet come down, it was again between two, two boards that had separated in the padding and rolled my ankle pretty hard nothing he did like again same as your situation nothing anyone did just bad placement and a really bad ring and we were supposed to wrestle in Erie later that night and my singles match got turned into a six-man tag because I couldn't put weight on my right foot oh man somehow I still managed to you know, do some stuff and get into the match. And we made it work story-wise. Yeah, of course. But, um, there was my singles match. Now it's now a six-man tag, and I get, I feel that obligation. I got to do something. So <laughs> well, if luckily, you were wrestling for PWR that night, was it still in the same building where the locker room was up all those stairs? The Collie Auditorium, no, this was uh, this oh, was okay, the smaller building. I don't know if you were ever in this. We did the we did a smaller building after that. No, um, because they had lost the Collie Auditorium, and it has been since tore down. Oh. And there was a smaller building up the road that didn't house as many people, and there was like a ten month or eleven month layoff 
And when we came back, it was a different building, a different feel. It didn't feel like that, that same energy wasn't there. And they, they were building the program with John McChesney and myself. And after, I want to say a good six months, we really started to catch some steam again. And then we were jam packing this building and we did well for years in that building. I mean, like standing room only Mm. 350 to 400, like shoulder to shoulder. And then when things busted off, um, their revenge is wrestling in the Avalon hotel there. And you can put a thousand people in there and we've done five, almost 600. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and it seems like wrestling has been reborn in Erie with that and then pandemic time. <laughs> yeah, of course. Hopefully, again, we can get past all of this and everything can go back to the regular normal, not the new normal. We can get pro wrestling going in. Like I said, me, I really just want like me. Am I ever going to get back in the ring to like wrestle? Maybe, maybe not. Most likely not. But, but I still want to get in there and just move around. Personally, I would love to see, yo, know, at least, here, here we go. You ready? One yeah. more match. One more. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's if the thing. Knows. I have I have told several promoters and, and promotions what my last match would have to be. Well, yeah. you know, there, there's That's nothing. That's the way I want to go out. There was, there's nothing wrong with one last loop, too. Yeah. Like, okay, here, 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 maybe pick like a handful of like five or six, like good, like, all right. So you have a gauge, like this is it, this is it, this is it. Cause like right now for me, I keep telling myself at, at the risk of sounding too old, I'll, I'll drop on your audience right now. Uh, I turned 40 years old in October. So 40 years old, I told myself when I'm 40, I'll be long gone, I'll be way <laughs> out. And I'm still in pretty good shape. I'm not injured. I'm not hurt. I mm-hmm. feel good. I'm still having fun. And, and at the risk of like being the, cause do you remember the old guys that would hang out like way too long? And mm-hmm. I told myself, I didn't want to be these guys. And I still feel like I'm not only competing with the guys that are in their mid twenties, but like, I still feel like I'm a step ahead of them. And that's and awesome. The, yeah, as long as I'm still in good shape, as long as I'm still having fun, my training's going good. I build a gym at home. Like, it's very crude equipment, but it works. Yeah. Um, I'm still in great shape. As long as my body holds up, this is still fun. Um, I, I looked at myself in the mirror not too long ago, and granted, um, having some uh, high profile, having a high profile loop helped with this and I thought yeah. I could get a few more years out of this if I just get right mentally mm-hmm. physically I've always kind of been here like I, I needed to get right mentally and, and last month kind of helped out a lot with that well let's talk about that because I mean we've kind of hinted at it here and there you did a loop for AEW you did uh two dark mat uh AEW darks and then dark elevation but you're not just being put in there with like, you know, so-and-so who's not on the show. You're being put in there first off with like the biggest, well, probably not the biggest faction, but one of the biggest factions you had a tag match against the Dark Order. Yep. Then you're also wrestling Hangman Adam Page, one of their biggest draws. And yep. then the the second match or the, la- the um, excuse me, the match that you had on Elevation you're wrestling John Moxley, who everybody freaking knows is like their number one baby face right now. I mean, uh, you're not just wrestling these nobodies. You're wrestling like the top tier talent um, at AEW. Um, yeah, uh, that was something else. Uh, like, I went in with no real expectation. Mm-hmm. We, we talked about what it was like backstage at WWE. So you kind of have like a, 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 you think you have a gauge. Uh, but you hear things about AEW. It's like, well, well, no, it's a little different here. And when I arrived there, I had no expectations. I didn't expect anything. Um, we'll just play it by ear, see how it goes. I have, I have years of experience. I should be able to handle any situation they throw me in. Mm-hmm. Well, I get there, and right away, it is. It's a very relaxed environment. 
everyone gets along well. Everything's, it, again, the word that come to mind was it's very relaxed, very professional. Um, so the first match we did was the six man against the Dark Order. Mm -hmm. And after I was done, I was like, wow, that, you know, that felt pretty good. I get in the back and there's some, uh, we'll say some high profile people mm -hmm. waiting for me. And they look at me and said, wow, that was really good. One of the first things said, was, where have you been hiding? <laughs> what a great question to be asked. Yeah, brother, I'm 6'4", and I'm 240 pounds, 250 pounds. Not necessarily hiding. Um, and we had some more conversation. I, I was asked how old I was. And when I said how old I was, I, I, I feel like at WWE, I told them at one point I was 33 years old. They kind of looked at me like, oh, 33 already, huh? Mm -hmm. I got laughed at. Uh, and I told AEW how old I was. It, they didn't bat an eyelash. It was kind of just glossed over. And I wanted to you know, kind of swing it back and be like, you did hear what I said, right? <laughs> and they didn't matter. It didn't matter. But the, the very next night, they were very happy with the Dark Order match. So the very next night, um, I go in to look to see what I'm doing. And you look down the run sheet, and there's my name across from uh, John Moxley. Wow. Wow is right. Have you met Moxley beforehand? Um, I think I met him once or twice. And one of the times would have been, you know, backstage at WWE, okay. a very brief, hey, how you doing in passing, but that's about it. Okay, so you've never, like, worked with him or anything before for him to, like, no. request you or anything like that? Nope, he wouldn't. Okay. I don't believe he would have known me from the man on the moon. Okay, perfect. Um, so, good guy, great guy. Um, I worked with him a couple times prior to his WWE run, so um really good guy he, he, he was really good to me um but I don't get nervous too often but when you see your name across from John Moxley and you're gonna go live before Dynamite in front of a live audience uh and with arguably one of the five most recognizable guys in the business today mm -hmm. easily one of the top five stars today the face of AEW for the for all intentional purposes, mm -hmm. in his house. So there was a little bit of a little bit of nerves. Like, all right, am I going to be able to slow this down in my head and make this work? Um, so I'm there and I and I'm feeling the moment, and I had completely blanked on his entrance not being the typical entrance that everyone else uses. Oh, yeah. So he comes down. From, he comes down from the and then. So the music starts, the video starts, and I'm kind of looking, and I hear the crowd roar, and I turn to my left just a little bit, and I'm like, that's right. I blanked in the moment, and because I was kind of feeling it, and then here he comes. Um, a little nervous, but I thought I did exceptionally well, well enough to get to where after the match, I got a, a lot of, hey, that was really good. Hey, that was really good. That was really good. So on the last day, here I am with another one of their top stars in a, in a high-profile singles match with Hangman Adam Page. And I thought that went uh, exceptionally well, you know, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a great overall experience. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to getting back to AEW. Let's just say without saying too much, I don't think it's going to be too much trouble, you know, la landing another loop with AEW. That's fantastic. I was just going to ask you, do you expect to hear back from them or, you know, maybe another round down there? So that's amazing. Um, I'm so happy for you. Thank you so much. Cause You're like, welcome. I, it's well-deserved. You bust your ass for, you know, 14, 15 years and you're finally getting some real good national exposure. It's fantastic. And this is something, again, we've rode together. This is something we've all, like a dream we've mm -hmm. all shared. And very, very few of us actually get, you know, you know get plucked from the crowd, so to speak, to, to get those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And when you do get those opportunities, not everyone that get the, the very few that get those opportunities, even fewer than that, 
succeed at that level. Of course. So it, it's a thing like, wow, I really think that I can still be not just competitive, but I can, I can do something here. It's that mentality and it's that, that drive and that push the fire, so to speak, has been, has been reignited. So we'll see. And I got a lot of people. Yeah. I got a lot of people um, like you particularly, which I appreciate a lot you know supporting me still at this point in, in this career in this journey and it doesn't go unnoticed believe me well there's very few people especially now that i'm pretty much on the outside looking in you know as as the podcast host that i you know there's a few people that i would say i didn't have a good time with or i would never like to see again or never have on my show even if they asked me but there's very few of those people, you know what I mean? And when I see, I like when I'm watching WWE or AEW or Ring of Honor or whatever product happens to be on my TV Monday through Friday, since it's every day of the week now, you know, I see people that I know and I'm not sitting here going, oh man, I wish that could be me. I'm like, man, they did it. They're, they're killing it wherever they're doing it. And I want from the outside, me being the fan watching, to put that up on a pedestal of my own to say, look at how well these people are doing. I mean, obviously I'm not getting WWE talent quite yet. I've had some, I've had Victoria and Molly Holly and, and Shane Hounds like that, but no one currently on the roster, but hopefully knock on wood soon. But I want people to know that I, even though I'm not there, I'm still happy for their successes. Right, because there, there are a few people at AEW that have contracts there that I, I'm friends with, mm -hmm. I'm fairly close with, and I, I was nothing but happy. And one of the guys I'll mention off the top top of my head was uh, Pepper Parks, you know, mm -hmm. Butcher and the Blade, like the Blade. He's been busting his ass for 20 years and has been told no for 20 years. And now he has a, a real opportunity to work for a great company and it's not well deserved. It's well earned. Yes. Because that, that guy has busted his ass, you know, and I watched a lot of that journey myself, probably a good, again, probably a good 10 years of it. I've seen. Um, so I'm happy for those people that, that get that opportunity Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those people that, like you said, I'm not shitting on everyone and like, oh, why them and not me? I I'm exactly. really happy that it lets me know that it is possible. It does happen. Mm -hmm. So the, the business you're getting into, I would tell anybody, don't get discouraged because it does happen. Not It can, it does. And what's great about right now is there's so many, like I mentioned, there's ROH, there's WWE, and of course, NXT is that extension. AEW, Impact, there's all of these amazing opportunities out there that you just have to, you know, find the way to kick in this door or kick in this door and you have TV opportunities. Cause like when I first started, Ring of Honor didn't have TV. Uh, right. TNA had, it was just TNA and WWE. You know, there wasn't, you know, it was okay. 25 women have a job and that's it out of how many women wrestlers in the world. And now you have all these opportunities that even the top 50 women when I started PWI has now turned into the 100 because there's so much opportunity and potential for women to expand. I'm sure, I mean, 500 is a lot for the men, so maybe it won't expand, but there's opportunities everywhere. If you're good, if you're willing to bust your ass and, you know, be good to the people that's around you at all time. Cause if you're, I'm sorry, but if you're an asshole, some people do make it still, unfortunately that happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a lot of times that word will get around and you might not get that opportunity. Opportunities are available now because like we said, 10 or 15 years ago, when we first met, those opportunities were not there. It not was a much. real struggle. It was a, it was a real struggle uh, to get noticed and even get booked regularly on the Indies was a struggle. Um, and that was something I got to try to explain to some people like, Oh, you, you know, you, you have a lot going for you right now. Social media wasn't that big of a deal. Um, YouTube, I don't even think was a, 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 an off the ground thing that people were using, uh, you know, completely at the time. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I was still sending tapes or, or, well, not tapes, but DVDs at least. I'm, I'm not from the 80s or early 90s. I was still right. sending DVDs everywhere. You know, I wasn't sending YouTube links. Yeah, DVDs with uh, contact info attached. Mm -hmm. Passing out uh, cards to promoters. Here's my contact info. That's yeah. how <laughs> we're dating ourselves a little bit here, huh? <laughs> that's on big hey, kids. If you're watching, that that's how we uh us grown-ups used to do it. <laughs> oh man. Well, I have one more personal story that I want to share before we start wrapping things up because do, I mean please. you and of course your ex, obviously, because I mean I worked with her a gazillion, 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 gazillion times in the beginning of my career. And we talked about how we would ride together places. Obviously, when I when I hurt my shoulder, you guys were there for me. I've stayed at your guys' house many of times. And one of the times I remember you brought a little tear to my eye. And I remember the story. Do you, do you want to tell this or do you want me to tell the story? Well, I'll tell my, per no, tell your perspective and then I'll tell my perspective. Go ahead. Uh, so um, I'm doing some work with a guy and I get the standard. I don't know if your viewers know or not, but I'm a fairly big guy and I get the standard. So uh, you're a big guy. You play football? No, I don't play football. <laughs> and uh, it gets quiet for another minute because I don't usually offer it up. And then he goes, you know, you kind of look like one of them pro wrestlers. <laughs> so, so now I chuckle. And uh, I said, it's funny you should say that. And I begin to explain what it is I do. And he mm -hmm. says, wow, it's funny you should say that. He, is, he was a local reporter in the Johnstown area that used to interview uh, for the newspaper, the WWE, when they came into town. This would have been back in the, 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 the mid to late 80s. He goes, I want to show you something. And then he has a bunch of like autographed eight by tens from that that era. He had like Mean Gene Okerlund, he had Hillbilly Jim, you know, Bobby Heenan, a, a few others, and he had one particular. And I can remember you staying at the house and I had had the conversation with uh, my ex. I said, you know, I, I mean, it, it's these are cool to have because they're hand signed. They're personal, they're not like stamped out, they're like hand markered. Mm -hmm. And I had talked to her, I said, you know, Steph's coming in this weekend. Do you think she, you know, she would like to have this? I, I think I want to give this to her. And she's like, well, I mean, if, it's up to you, really, if you want to let it go. I said, well, I really think she'd appreciate this more than me. So I began prefacing the story by like briefing you a little bit. And I said, and I looked at you and I remember saying, I think you would appreciate this a lot more than I did. Mm-hmm. And I handed you a hand signed sensational Sherry eight by 10. Yeah. And like I said, this brought like a real tear to my eye. Cause like when you, like I was packing up my stuff to leave. And like, yeah. I think, I think Diana was there with me that weekend, which was my best friend. And you're like, hold on, wait a second. I have something for you. And I was like, what are you talking about? What do you have for me? I've been at your house all weekend. Like, yeah. why are you giving it to me when I'm leaving? And like, you guys gave it to me and I'm like, I like tear up because like anything of hers, I love, obviously for those who don't know, I mean, if you can't tell sensational Sherry's here in my background at all times, but we have a special guest here with us today, Bill. Oh. I have the eight by 10. <laughs> you do, how about that? that was the exact eight by 10 that I handed you. And I remember your reaction to that like you genuinely welled up and, and tears in your eyes. And I remember thinking what, like, like it got to me a little bit because I knew how much, oh, well, I suspected how much that would mean to you, but to actually see the reaction on your face and see how much it meant to you. And that was probably 2009 or so. So you've yeah. had that photo for quite a number of years and it's, I know it's not personalized to you, but it, it is hand signed by Sensational Share Yourself. And I thought, you know, Steph would really, really appreciate this. Well, and it's so funny because I actually forgot about the reporter and I'm like, I have no idea who Rick is. 
Right. But I have an eight by ten, and I'm really excited about it. <laughs> right. And um, I, I thought, you know, it's a little weird because her name's not Rick. <laughs> and, Doesn't uh, matter to me. I, yeah, I didn't think that it would. I thought you'd really appreciate a piece of like knowing this is something that Sherry actually held in her hands. She actually signed it herself. Like I said, it wasn't like a print off. Mm -hmm. It wasn't stamped. It, it was actually signed specifically, like personalized. And now you have that. And it, it couldn't have gone to a better home, in my opinion. And I'm really glad that you still have that. Well, it's, it literally sits on my desk here next to my computer. Every podcast I do, every time I sit in this seat, it's right here in front of me. I mean, obviously I have her here. I couldn't yeah. quite find the right spot for her to go behind me. And again, it says to Rick. So I was like, people probably wonder <laughs> why do I have Rick's eight by 10? But like you said, like it does mean a lot to me because it is handwritten by her. You know, this is obviously a painting somebody else did, Rob Schomberger from WWE. And this one is a print off, actually a fan sent me for free. Like I saw it on their Instagram and they sent it to me and I was like, oh my God, this is the best gift. But this also was, cause I mean, I never got to meet Sherry. The only time I was even in her vicinity was I went to when, um, I'm bad with the years, WrestleMania in Chicago, the year that she was inducted into the hall of fame. That would have been 2006. I was it 2006? So it was the year before she passed. That was the only time I was in the same vicinity with her because I actually went to that Hall of Fame. And, you know, like to have something that she had like really meant a lot to me. And I remember the month after she passed, I was in uh, Tennessee wrestling an old school style match. And I wore a black band that said SM on, yeah. on it for her. And, uh, Oh God, who was it? There was an old school women's wrestler whose name just right now escapes me, but I know it's going to pop in my head and I'm going to be like, why didn't I remember that? But anyway, um, she was like, oh, you like Sherry? I was like, I loved her. I never got to meet her. And like, we sat there for like two hours talking about like Sherry memories that like we both had. Obviously she had more because she knew her. Um, but like, I'm telling her about how much she meant to me. And oh, those kind of little things mean so much to me. And I, I want you to know that, like, even when I first handed that, and I'm looking through, and it was kind of near the back of this pile of uh, eight by tens, and I, that you were the first person I thought of. I said, you know, uh, these are really cool, and I like them, but like this one, this one here, there's somebody that this would mean a lot to. Mm -hmm. And again, the fact that you still have, like, I, I figured you would still have it. But the fact that I could give, yeah, there you go. The <laughs> fact that I could give that to you and have you appreciate the way you did it means a lot to me. And I want you to know that, like I said, when I got that, there's only one person I thought about, only one place that could go, Sassy Steffi. Well, again, I, like I said, I appreciate it so much. Even now, like if that was 2009, you know, God, I'm terrible at math. So it's 21. So what, 11 years, 12 years ago. I mean, yep. oh, I, I still have it. It still means the world to me. Like I said, I forgot the reporter part, but I'm glad that you put that back in my head. So when people ask me about this story, I can remind, yeah, I know who Rick was. Rick was a reporter in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Right. And there you go. Now you have, uh, you have a piece of that and I'm, I'm glad that you have it. Like I said, I don't think it could have gone to a better home. Oh, well, thank you so much. Well, Bill, it's been great talking to you and I can't wait. Next time you're on AEW, I'm like going to super, like, obviously this is going to go out probably before then, but when right. you're back on AEW, I'm going to be pumping this interview back out just to put you over even more. Tagging AEW, make sure you get on Dynamite next time. Thank you, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Definitely. All right, Bill, it's been fun. Until next time, guys.